We love talking about Batman here at Game Ranks, and if you know me, your old pal Jake, you know I really love talking about Batman, so we figured today was a good day as any to take a quick trip down memory lane and talk about one of the more underrated, maybe even a little forgotten Batman games, Batman Arkham Origins. Yup, that one. The one often considered a little lesser because it's not a mainline Arkham game and isn't developed by Rocksteady Studios, unlike Arkham Asylum, City, and Night. This was a very different time and Warner Brothers wanted to capitalize on the Arkham excitement, so we got this game to hold us over when it released October 25th, 2013 for PS3, 360, PC, and Wii U. At first, I wasn't too crazy about it because it felt like it had a different vibe. It was developed by Warner Brothers Montreal, and they very much did their own thing. But now, thanks to the lens of time, looking back, this was a damn good Batman game that set itself apart from the other Arkham games. That's what makes it special. It feels different. It's another satisfying Batman thing, and if you played it when it released and didn't like it, or maybe you wrote it off, you should consider playing it again. Let's dive in. So what sets it apart from the Arkham games is time. Really, it's a prequel, and this is an earlier Batman. It takes place quite a few years before Arkham Asylum, during Batman's earlier years. So there's no Dick Grayson, uh, no anyone else going on here. It's Alfred and Bruce Wayne figuring it all out. Batman is still discovering new criminals and is actually wanted by the GCPD because he's still much more of an unknown vigilante, and pre-commissioner Jim Gordon is pursuing him. It's also early in the Joker's criminal career too. So there's a lot the story can do and it mostly does a good job using what it has. This is a rougher, meaner, more brash, and even a bit more sloppy of a Batman. You know, he makes mistakes, he gets angry and frustrated. At one point early on, Batman is like taking out Gotham police officers and Alfred is like, hey, maybe take it easy, Bruce. And Batman literally says, they're as corrupt as they come and they're in my way. Like, whoa, dude, take a chill pill, relax. Of course, Batman never really relaxes, but some of the mistakes and maneuvers Bats makes in this game makes him feel particularly younger in some interesting ways. This is the Batman that prefers to get impatient and mercilessly pound you into the dust while interrogating you, rather than like just being awesome and scaring you and holding you over a building ledge. He's a bit less methodical and it's interesting to see that play out. I do wish the game went a little further with this. Towards the end it just boils down to just feeling like another Arkham Tale and that whole young fresh Batman thing kind of takes a backseat to everything else, but still when it is explored it's really interesting. Now gameplay wise it's more Batman Arkham style gameplay, which I don't think is a bad thing, but it's set in an open world Gotham City pretty much for the first time. This was ambitious. It was much bigger than Arkham City's open environment. It wasn't a closed off section of the city turned into a prison. No, it was very much just Gotham City with, with bridges, multiple districts, and some areas reused from Arkham City, but it was pretty blown out. And the game basically explained away civilians, you know, no traffic on the streets or people walking around, because that probably would have been been tough to figure out for a mid-level Batman game with a lesser budget and reusing some gameplay elements. So Gotham City is on lockdown here. You know, the recent crime sprees, attacks threatened, and a snowstorm means everyone is tucked away inside so Batman can punch whoever he wants. And for the most part, it worked. You know, there's a little bit of suspension of disbelief required, but it was kind of nice getting to explore a lonely, quiet, snowy city. It's a bit mysterious and atmospheric and works for Gotham. The open city itself, though, wasn't super taken advantage of gameplay-wise, though. You know, it's fun to travel through it towards your next mission, but otherwise it was low-key scenery with few distractions. You know, there's a few things to hunt down. There's some bad guys hanging out in the streets and on rooftops that you can drop in on and beat up. There were Riddler trophies to hunt down and, uh, yeah, pretty cut and dry. Thankfully, there was some stuff to see. The shadow of the Ace Chemical building was always there. Uh, there were Christmas decorations in places, and oh yeah, yeah, that reminds me. This game, having a little bit of holiday spin on it, absolutely worked wonders. You know, little details like Christmas decorations in the Gotham City Police Department, or just being somewhere and hearing the occasional jingle of a Christmas song, really helped build a unique atmosphere. Now, when it comes to Batman games, movies, comics, and stuff, I always look forward to seeing how they implement the fact that Batman is a genius 
detective. He is a thinker. Some of the movies don't really give him too much time to shine in that regard, but the Arkham games always have, starting right with Arkham Asylum, and now Arkham Origins is where Batman's detective skills really get fleshed out a little bit more. The detective stuff from the previous two games made a return here, you know, with detective vision and stuff, but there's some new additions. The biggest thing was the ability to scrub through a crime scene. You know, like being able to fast forward and rewind the crime scene and kind of put the pieces together yourself. You would do this to figure out where something landed, bullet trajectory, footprints, etc. And it would help you pinpoint the location of whatever it was you're looking for. The first big scene, really the memorable one where you get to use all this stuff and put it together smartly is the Black Mask crime scene. Using the time manipulation mechanic, you're able to piece together a murder. And the revelation is awesome. You're able to figure out who done it, who snuck in from a balcony, or where to find a victim's cell phone, and also rule out that Penguin was a potential suspect. It's all really cool and is very Batman stuff, you know? Being able to control Batman and solve this crime was awesome because I feel like that's how Batman would go about solving that. It makes sense here how he talks through it. The detective stuff does pop up throughout the whole game, but that crime scene part always kind of stood out as really showing off that fun time mechanic and really just feels like a standout and specific moment for the series, like a real highlight. Now, part of the reason it all does feel different is because of the main voice actor, Roger Craig Smith, as Bruce Wayne Batman. He's replacing, of course, the legendary Kevin Conroy, who voiced all of the other Arkham games, and in my mind, is the voice of Batman, hands down, always has been. So Roger Craig Smith, you know, a pretty established and admittedly great voice actor from a lot of legendary games, still had a mountain of a bar to pass. And now, years later, looking back, he did a great job and has done a great job since. His Bruce has some nuance and his Batman is gravelly and just straight up just kind of sounds cool. I don't know, there's no other way to really explain it. Origins was really able to do its own thing. You know, for example, Alfred. In other Arkham games, Alfred is Alfred. He's there, he's great, but you take him for granted a bit. Now here in Origins, we get some truly great, if brief, Alfred moments where ideologies clash between him and Bruce. And we've seen conflict between Alfred and Bruce in various Batman stories, of course, but it's nice to see it played out in a video game. Straight up, they do a good job. Plus, since there is that little time gap from the previous Arkham games, it is separate. They can play around with pre-Arkham stuff. We get to see a Bane and Killer Croc that are a bit different from their other appearances. Uh, we also get to, of course, see uh, some of the underrated Black Mask. We get to see the first time Batman really beats the shit out of Oswald Cobblepot. Anarchy shows up at one point, and we get some cool boss battle stuff with Deathstroke. I mean, come on. Plus, there are just cool little badass Batman moments. Like, for example, early on in the game, uh, they set up like a big boss battle with, with a villain, and then Batman straight up puts him down with one hit. And it, it's just like iconic and memorable and just really, really well done. and does a good job showing off the force and smarts of Batman. Then, of course, there's the Joker, this time voiced by Troy Baker, and he does a really good job and, you know, tries to kind of do his own thing, just like Roger Craig Smith does. Now, this Joker thing isn't really spoiling anything, but it turns out he's in the game after initially the game was very much marketed and set up as not really a Joker tale at all, but they couldn't really help themselves. And so, of course, the Joker has sort of a key role here. At first, when I played the game, I was like, really? I wanted to focus on the Black Mask and Cobblepot and all that. You know, we couldn't try something else? But I will say what they did do with the Joker makes sense and gives you a bit more context for Joker going forward in this Arkhamverse. So ultimately, I appreciated it, but that's just me. So ultimately, I think the biggest failure of Batman Arkham Origins is just there should have been more. Does that make sense? Like they should have gone further with the younger Batman thing. They should have gone further with all of the character relationships and just done even more to flesh out this pre-Arkham universe. Now I say that as like a negative, but it's only because I like what they did establish here, what they did do, even though a lot of it felt a little brief and fleeting, it was interesting and satisfying and really well done. From the different interpretations of the villains to the setup of the Joker, to even just the setup of Harley Quinn, to the concept of Batman having a price on his head and all these villains coming after him during a winter storm on a holiday night in Gotham City, all of those concepts are really awesome. And even if it has flaws here and there. Really, it was a fun Batman time that's worth revisiting if you're just itching for more Batman stuff, more Batman Arkham gameplay, more punching, you know, the combat, and then the puzzle solving, and just seeing a ton of villains and just lore. There's good stuff here, and it's why we think ultimately Batman Arkham Origins by Warner Brothers Montreal just shouldn't be forgotten. Yes, of course, it's like the black sheep of the Arkham family, but don't count it out.
But of course, that's just us. We love talking about Batman. We want to hear from you guys in the comments. Of course, we probably know what your other favorite Arkham games are, but we'd love to hear what you thought about Origins. It's been very, very long, so let's talk about the story. Let's talk about the gameplay. Let's talk about anything. Let us know anything you want about Batman, Arkham Origins, and Batman Arkham in general down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, though, and a trip down memory lane, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.